Hello guys, welcome to a first for me. This is the HMS Prince of Wales from Tamiya in 1 to 350 scale. And this is the first ship kit that I've ever built. I featured this on my Up Next in 2022 video at the end of 2021. So it has been a while in the waiting, but uh, here we have the build video today. As you can see, the box is absolutely huge and the completed model will have a length of about 650 millimeters or approximately 25.5 inches. So it really is a large kit indeed. We can see on the side of the box here, we've got the paint scheme as the Prince of Wales was completed in 1941 with an overall gray paint scheme. And we have the camouflage scheme of December 1941, which is when she was lost. A little bit of background before we look inside the box. So the real ship was a King George V class battleship laid down in 1937. Due to the Washington Naval Treaty and the later Treaty of London, the Prince of Wales was limited to 14 inch guns, even though it was clear at the time that some of the other signatories of those treaties were breaking those regulations. Despite her short lifetime, the Prince of Wales was involved in a number of notable actions in World War II. In May 1941, she was involved in the hunt for the Bismarck in an action that ultimately saw the sinking of the HUD. In August 1941, she carried Churchill across the Atlantic for a secret meeting with Franklin D. Roosevelt. And in September of the same year, she was involved in convoy escort duties in the Mediterranean. But perhaps most famously, or most notoriously, in October 1941, the Prince of Wales set sail for Singapore in order to help protect her British interests in the region. On December the 6th, as part of Force Z, she was sent up Malaya's east coast to intercept Japanese forces landing at Kota Baru. On the morning of December the 10th, 1941, the British ships of Force Z, which included the Prince of Wales and the Repulse, were spotted by Japanese aircraft off the coast of Kwantan. They were rapidly attacked by Japanese torpedo bombers and lacking air cover, they had very little defence against them. Over the course of four attacks, the repulse was hit at least three times and sunk with the loss of 513 men. The Prince of Wales was hit by four torpedoes and a 500 kilo bomb, which caused irreparable damage. The order to abandon ship was given and only five minutes later the Prince of Wales capsized and sunk, along with 327 men. The loss of the repulse and the Prince of Wales was a major blow to the British, and combined with the Japanese attacks on Pearl Harbour, it meant there was no credible British or American naval presence across the whole of the Indian Ocean or the Pacific. And of course the British would also go on to lose Malaya and Singapore by the middle of February 1942. Today the wrecks of the Prince of Wales and the Repulse lay in relatively shallow water off the coast of Kwantan in Malaysia. And sadly in recent years, despite them being war graves, they have been illegally plundered for scrap metal and the wrecks have been heavily damaged. Looking at the instructions of the kit, we have several pages covering the background of the Prince of Wales focusing mainly on her time in Southeast Asia. We can see here a map of her final route up the coast of Malaya to her final resting place near Kuantan. From my point of view, this was quite an interesting experience looking through the instructions. Uh, there are a few things that jumped out at me straight away. The first was that I will probably need to make a lot of sub-assemblies and paint them separately. I suppose in that respect, building a ship is probably more like building a car or an aircraft than building an armour model. It also occurred to me here that we are building the propellers first, but that's probably not going to be the best idea because they will definitely get knocked off or damaged at some point during the construction. And steps three and four in the instructions made it clear to me why there'll be so many sub-assemblies because of course the deck is going to be painted essentially a single colour 
but we've got all of these additions onto it which will need to be painted the, uh, the metal colour, the camouflage colour of the metal. So we've got lifeboats there for example, we've got gun positions, we've obviously got the turret itself. Then in step five, we move quite quickly actually to putting the uh, stern deck in place, then the middle deck, the bow deck, and then we start to build up the uh, superstructures here. And again, painting the superstructure is going to be interesting because we have uh, one colour on top and a camouflage pattern on the side of them. So that's another good reason to keep those separate from the decking. Then we move to step 9 which has a huge number of lifeboats of various sizes. Step 11, step 12, building up various aspects of the bridge. The funnels in step 15 and then step 16 we start to bring things together. Lots of weaponry being made in step 17. That includes things like the five and a quarter inch guns and the anti-aircraft guns. Then some final details in step 19 onwards. We also have the Walrus float plane to build. In steps 21, 22 and 23 we add a few more final details, plus we have some Japanese aircraft to build, if we want, to represent those that attack the Prince of Wales during her final voyage. I'm not sure yet whether or not I'll be building those. Then finally we have a painting guide. Now I'm led to believe that both the colours and the pattern on the painting guide might not be 100% accurate. There is a lot of debate going backwards and forwards on this um, on the internet. So that's something I need to study before my next video where I actually come around to, uh, to painting the ship. And even though this is my first ship model, I decided to make my life a little bit harder with this Edouard Photo Etch set. Edward do a number of sets for this kit, but this is just the railing set, although it does have a crane in there as well. I haven't gone for things like the ladders and the doors and all those bits and pieces because I felt that was just a bit too much. The Edward kit includes very typical instructions for them, with the additions in blue. There's nothing to be removed from the kit parts to be replaced, this is simply adding new detail i.e. the railings. So to help me do that I went through the instructions and I simply made a note for myself every time I needed to add some PE from the Edward set. And there is quite a lot of it. Then without further ado I got straight into the instructions, well actually I skipped the first step which was the propellers and went straight to building the turrets. These are a relatively simple construction, a single piece for all four gun barrels, of course the seam down the side there needs removing, and in case we forget which piece is which we have the turret number, the piece number on the inside of the turret there. Now the instructions do have you attaching these turrets to the deck with a small attachment piece from below so the turrets can still move. The problem with that is it means we need to attach the turrets before we put the decking pieces onto the hull. And I don't really want to do that so I'm going to leave the attachment pieces off and just drop the uh, turrets in. They'll still work and rotate just as they should do and 
they're not going to fall out because I'm not going to be taking this kit and turning it upside down. Tamiya used quite a good system here for drilling out the holes. On the underside of the deck pieces we have a K for the King George V and we have a P for the Prince of Wales and we just drill out or cut out the relevant holes. There are quite a few of them and you can see that I've done some of these so far on the bow section. Here I'm dry fitting, test fitting these pieces but not necessarily gluing them into place at the moment because they'll need to be painted separately. That's particularly true of the lifeboats. Next up I move to building some of the superstructures. This is the boat deck and it's supposed to be completed in step 8, but I skipped ahead a little bit. As you can see it's got a fairly rigid system of keeping the walls together there and square, along with the back plate. Just to make sure everything was lined up properly, once I put the glue in place, I fitted it over the section of the middle deck while the glue set up. This is what that same boat deck looks like populated with all of the boats, or almost all of the boats. These have all been just roughly cut off the sprue for now, they do need cleaning up. Several of them are also in two parts, again that will facilitate painting. And it just goes to show the variety of boats that was carried by the Prince of Wales. There are a number of quite fiddly mast pieces which will be added to this boat deck. As I'm going to say about a thousand times in this video, they were built up and they were dry fitted into position to get all the angles correct and everything, but they were not glued into position just yet. To help me stay organised I kept those pieces together in a Ziploc bag, separate from other sub-assemblies. We also have these smaller raised deck sections which go alongside the main superstructure. Again they had some holes that needed to be drilled out in order to fit some lifeboats. And you do need to be careful because the lifeboat pieces that go on each of the decks and the sections are slightly different, they've all got different part numbers. So they do need to be kept separate from each other and together with their relevant piece. I didn't glue this piece down because it would be very hard to paint it if it was attached to the deck. However, I fitted it into position so that I could glue the ladder to it and get it at the right angle. There were a few sections that I did attach to the deck however, such as these small pieces here. I'm sorry, I'm not quite sure what they're called, but they are clearly part of the, uh, the anchor um, mechanism. Carrying on in the same style, I moved on to the bridge base. This uh, top section here is one single piece. And I believe these four enclosures here will eventually carry the 20mm um, weapons. On top of that bridge base goes this bridge one piece. Again I'm dry fitting it now but I'm keeping it separate both for painting and for the addition of PE. That bridge one piece has its own upper deck which goes on it. Again with ladders. And in fact another piece on the very top there of the superstructure. So quite a complex structure there. And you can imagine how hard it would be to get the airbrush into all those nooks and crannies if I did build it up now. Behind the bridge one structure goes this, which is the boiler room vent. Ah, 
and that has to be installed now, or at least before the bridge one structure goes into place. The first funnel is a simple two piece design. What I tend to do with these is leave the sprue nubs on until everything's glued and set and then cut them off afterwards. I find if I cut the sprue nubs off first you tend to get a slight imbalance between the two halves because you can never cut them off equally when they're separate and it makes it very hard to keep the seam smooth in the final version. We will need some photo etch around the outside of this platform here. In total, the Prince of Wales had eight five and a quarter inch guns, and they're made up in step 17. Like the main guns, it's a relatively simple process. We've got a main turret piece, a single piece for the two barrels, and then in this case, a smaller piece that sits below those and holds them into place. The instruction manual says that these guns could be aimed at any angle, but that 15 degrees was the normal angle. And that's what I went for as I glued them. You couldn't really leave these movable because they would just push back into the turret, and I can't really see any reason why you would want to anyway. Our two pounder pom-pom guns were next, of which there are six. Again, this is the kind of piece where you can buy dedicated Edouard photo etch and uh, really crank up the detail on them, but I didn't want to do that for this, uh, this first attempt. It's not all over yet though, as we have two rangefinders for the five and a quarter inch guns, plus we have four 20 millimeter guns and six searchlights. To be honest, the building of the superstructures didn't take as much time as I thought it would, and it was soon time to get the deck into the hull piece and uh, think about some PE. One slight curiosity here, at least for me, is that this centerpiece goes into the middle deck piece like so. But as you can see, due to this protruding piece of plastic, it doesn't lay flat on the deck. Now what Tamiya will have us do is cut out this rectangular piece here to make a hole, and then that will fit through that hole. I'm not quite sure why Tamiya went for that approach, to be honest. I simply removed the protruding part from the uh, insert, sanded it flat, and it fit perfectly into place without me digging a hole in the deck. So the deck pieces generally did fit quite well, but of course with such a, a long hull and quite flexible sides, I did have to put all three in place at the same time in order to make sure everything fit correctly. As you can see, that does mean there's a, uh, a lateral seam in the deck where the pieces join, but there's not really that much I can do about that, to be honest. I guess if we had a single piece wooden deck add-on aftermarket, that would fix that problem, but um, I don't. And with that done, it was time to approach the dreaded photo etch. This stuff really is quite tiny. Luckily, it's not that delicate, although I did manage to break a couple of pieces when I was bending them. Generally, I could uh, manage to get them back together okay. Now, I have heard from some people that PVA is quite useful for attaching ship railings, photo etched ship railings, but I did go with the good old uh, superglue approach. I tried to start with what I thought would be an easier piece, which is one of the railings across one of the main guns. Now, the approach I took at first, and this may change as I carry on adding the photo etch, because I, I still haven't finished it at the time of uploading this video, was to bend the initial quite sharp corner, glue that into place and let it dry, and then come back later and bend and glue a little bit more, bend and glue a little bit more, and so on. 
and that seemed to work reasonably well for this turret here. You can see there, uh, closest to us where I'm pointing you right now, I have lost a bit of the railing, it, it just broke. I didn't even see when it broke, I just looked at it at one point and it was missing. I've not gone too badly there on the super glue. hopefully that won't be too visible after a coat of primer. But I do think, even on this small piece, it adds a good level of detail. I did a similar thing here on the bow. I figured this was the best place to start for the main deck, as otherwise it's really hard to tell exactly where the main rail goes, whereas the bow has got a very defined position. Finally, this is the uh, plastic crane, which we are provided by Tamiya for the Walrus aircraft. And of course, that needs to be replaced with the photo etched version. Like so. The photo etch was difficult and time consuming, and it really is only possible to do a couple of pieces at a time before frustration sets in. However, I am quite pleased with this result so far. I'm going to keep on adding this photo etch over the next few days and weeks, and then I will get around to priming and painting the ship. I must admit, I was really pleasantly surprised by this build. It is a relatively simple build apart from the photo etch. There aren't actually that many parts to it. I suspect that the painting process will be more difficult than the building process, to be honest, because we have to deal with the deck, which will be a wooden colour, the horizontal surfaces, which will be a single grey colour, I believe, and the vertical surfaces, which will have the camouflage on them. And of course, although keeping parts separate does make things easier for painting, it also means we have to be a bit more careful about getting those um, vertical patterns matching on separate pieces. So it's going to be all good fun when it comes to finishing this build. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed my first attempts at building a ship. As always, thank you to everyone for watching, and an extra shout out to my YouTube members and Patreon supporters who give extra to the channel each month. It's much appreciated guys, so thank you very much. I am trying to get my desk cleared and my existing projects complete before I start any new projects. However, by the time this video goes public, I will be in Telford so uh, I may well be buying some new kits and uh, certainly doing some inbox looks, if not some new builds uh, coming soon. But until then, I'm going to be having some fun with some photo etch. And until my next video, I wish you fun modelling. Thanks for watching, guys.